welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on future videos. But as for today's video, we're just going to be going over what I'm driving. As you know, if you've been following along with the channel, the Mustang is down and out for a while. So I have my old car back. Luckily, I didn't get rid of this. I actually sold it to a family member when we bought the Pathfinder. I didn't give this in when I bought the Mustang. This was my old family car and family was growing, had the dog, had the kids, didn't fit anymore. So we actually got rid of this when we got the new Pathfinder. So lucky for me, like I said, the Mustang is down. So I had this around. I didn't have to rent a car or go out and try to find some cheap thing, especially with the way prices are on used cars right now. It would just be not worth it. And the family member that we sold this to is not driving it right now. So... I lucked out for once, luck changed a little bit for me, not car wise, well not my car wise, but like I said, I have this one, it's around, I'm able to use it so I can get from point A to point B still. So this was actually my vehicle, I bought this brand new back in the day, so let's hop out, I'll show you exactly what it is, go over some of the features, there's not many, but we'll just show you what I used to drive. So this is it, it's a 2011 Chevy Cruze in red. The color was one of the few options that we got on this car. It is the same as today. A few of the paint colors you can order cost an extra little bit. We did want the red between me and my wife. So I think at the time it was like $300 or something like that to get the red. So one of the options, it is an LT. It's the mid-grade model. Not your base base, but not your top of the line either. So. Like I said, I did buy this car brand new back in 2011, and it's perfect. Got good gas mileage, nothing ever went wrong with it, no major issues. And lucky for me, like I said, I did give it to the brother-in-law when we bought the Pathfinder. So I'm lucky enough to still have this in the family and be able to drive it now that the Mustang is down. So it does just have your plain Jane steel wheels with the hubcaps. You can tell probably by the video this thing needs a bath. It has been sitting in the yard, not really moving for the last, I'd say two and a half, maybe three years since I bought the Pathfinder. They haven't driven it much. He did want it just to learn how to drive originally and he has been slacking. So still hasn't. So for now, I've stolen the car back. It's not technically in my name, but it's back in my possession and I can have some fun with her. All right, then moving on to the interior. Like I said, when we went to buy this originally, we were just looking for a cheap vehicle to get to and from work. So we wanted something that was comfortable, had a few options, but not paying for a bunch of crap that we didn't want. So as you can see, steering wheel, nothing like the cars nowadays. You got your cruise control. That's it. It's one of the options the car had. Cruise control on, cruise control off. That's to turn it on when you're actually driving. And then you're set and reset and go quicker go slower same as cruise control nowadays that is it that's all that's on here a few other options that we got is the power windows it does have power obviously and then your locks are here you just got a couple of your everyday buttons here you got your hazards you can have actual buttons which is what i miss on a lot of the cars now real buttons to change stuff around for your vents and stuff air conditioning is one of the other options at the time if you're a younger kid and you're watching this this has an actual cd player yes i paid extra actually to get a cd player in the mustang it came with the bno system that was upgraded and it does actually have a CD player. You don't have to plug your phone into this to listen to your old school music. You can if you want, but if you're old school like me and you still have your CDs, you can pop them in and you're good to go. I know it does show a phone here. This car actually does not even have Bluetooth. Can't hook up your phone. There's no phone access, won't do anything. You can see here, you got your different stations. Like I said, buttons for everything. That's the nicest part about this car. And as for the screen, that's it. You get nothing. It's your radio, no GPS, no navigation, nothing like that. You get your radio, what station you're on, the time, and when the car is running, you get the temperature outside. And that is it. You come over to the dash, 
you can see your old school analog gauges. You got your speed, tack, your temperature, fuel. In the middle here is your little menu screen. You can scroll through a couple things like your mileage and your trip and all that stuff is in the little middle screen there. And same as the cars that you see now, got your menu, high beams, lightings and stuff on here. And this side is just your wipers and your intermittent wipers and stuff like that. And the other thing you can get is the only thing here. This is brightness of your dash, brighter or darker, depending how you want it. And that's your lights, either off, auto, your daytime lights, your whole lights, or you can turn them right off like that. So it defaults to the auto spot, even if you turn it to off, defaults to auto. So when you get back in the car, even if you had the lights off, it won't let you forget to turn the lights on because it's defaulted back to the automatic setting. So that's one of the things you didn't have to worry about. Up here, which I always thought was pretty useless, is a tiny, tiny, tiny little storage spot. But it's so small when this comes down, like you can barely even fit a wallet in there. So I don't really get what that would be for. Maybe put a couple paper towels or napkins or something in there, but that's about it. Up here, you just have your interior lights. There's no garage opener. There's nothing like that. No sunroof, no anything. Cloth seats just have a black interior. It is filthy in here. Not my fault. Like I said, this was not even my car. I didn't touch it for the last few years. So we're going to have to give her a good clean. A little thank you to the people that are letting me use the car. It'll come back better shape than it was when I got it. So black interior. You can see kids seats still fit in the back. It is tight if you're an adult. It's not a big car. Obviously it's a, bigger, it's a compact car. So there is room to fit. But if you're taller, you're going to have to squish in there a little bit. But other than that, this is her. This was my brand new baby back in 2011. Kept her until we got the Pathfinder at the end of 2017. So it ran good. Right now it has just over 151,000 kilometers. Only issue that it had, let's call it a major issue, is when it was still under warranty, the water pump went and they replaced it. What we notice is the coolant was slowly dripping onto the garage floor. And when coolant dries, you kind of get like a white powder almost when it dries. Kind of the same as air conditioning. Some cars with the air conditioning drip will do the same thing. But the coolant dries gives a little bit of a white powder. So when we started looking around a little bit, we noticed that the coolant was low. Brought it in. Chevy replaced it. And so far we have not had the same issue again. So hopefully that is fixed. All right, and this is your key. Yes, it is a key. You push the button and you have an actual key. This is the weirdest part that I cannot get used to still. I've driven vehicle with my Mustang and the Pathfinder are both push, push, push button start. So I keep just by habit jumping in, throwing the keys in the cup holder or wherever, or leaving them in my pocket. I go to start the car and I need an actual key. You flip it open, you actually have to put it in the ignition and start it. Never happens, but it's finally I'm getting used to it. I've had this thing for about a week now, but I keep jumping in here, throwing the keys in there, or they'll be in my bag, or they'll be in my pocket, and then you go, oh crap, I need to actually start this thing. Living in the ancient times nowadays in this little Chevy. And that's it. You guys wanted to know what I was driving. This is what I'm stuck in, back in the old school little Chevy Cruze. 2011, she's going 151,971 kilometers on her right now. And the gas tank I filled up yesterday had 770 kilometers to empty. I can't remember the last time I saw that much because the Mustang I was getting 350, maybe 375 if I took her easy. So that'll be a big change. Save a bunch of money in fuel, I guess, while we wait for the Mustang. But as for now, that's it. There is a couple problems with the car. I wouldn't call it problems. It's just because it sat for so long, it has a check engine light. So we're gonna deal with that in the next video. And also the trunk pop, the little button to pop your trunk open isn't working. So I ordered a new one. We're gonna put that in as well. Just something to do, something to keep you guys entertained watching, supporting the channel. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this one. Hopefully we catch you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.